Anyone who's ever been to a botanic garden has probably seen a sign to, or maybe a building called, a herbarium. Interestingly, they are one of the most important parts of the garden, yet one rarely visited by the general public. Well, today, you're in for a fabulous treat. Neville Walsh, senior botanist at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Melbourne, explains why this herbarium, and indeed all herbariums, are so important. Never. what is a herbarium? Well, unlike what a lot of people think, it's not a place where herbs grow. It's really, it's really a museum in a sense of, of preserved plant specimens. And why are herbariums so important? Well, for people might, like me, botanists, they're our tools in a sense. They're our reference points for knowing how to identify plants, to compare them with species we might need to know for whatever reason. But also, even, even 200 years plus after Joseph Banks visited Australia, we're still finding new species. So herbaria are the place that we refer to if we want to decide that a collection, a new collection is actually a new species. How are specimens kept? Well, after we press them in the field, um, they're then flat and they're dry and they get mounted onto acid-free paper, onto a piece of card, with a good label with as much information as we can have, date of collection, place, who collected it, and put into our cupboards with the 1.4 million other specimens. The National Herbarium of Victoria has one of the largest herbariums in Australia and is rich in historical specimens, including ones collected by Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander from Botany Bay in 1770, by Robert Brown on Matthew Flinders' circumnavigation of Australia and from the expedition of Burke and Wills. Keep an eye out for your local botanic garden's next herbarium open date. Not only are they interesting places to visit, they're an important piece of our botanic history.